I'm going to show you how to make an X hinge out of the same iron-on covering material that you use to cover the model. This uh, willy-nilly's cub was hinged with this X hinge method. <clears throat> and in some places it's done as a single hinge like on the tail surfaces or on the wings there are five individual hinges that have been used. Now the way this works is you bevel one or both uh, of the sides that are going to be hinged together. I like to do both. It just leaves more room for the uh, aileron or the elevator to move. I usually have way more movement capability than I'll actually need in the model. But you start out with the first piece and you iron it down straight across the top of the two pieces. And then what I do is after I've got them firmly, well, uh, adequately ironed down, I will bend the piece and I'll use the iron across the area where it's going to hinge over the whole length or if I've got multiple hinges I do all of the hinges at once while I'm holding the uh, piece bent that lets the heat stretch out the hinge in the uh, area where it's actually going to hinge with that done completely fold the piece over leaving the first part of the hinge folded back on itself like this and if you look at it, you'll see that there's a small bit of it protruding in the center. You then take the second piece, wrap it around, tack it down on the corners and the ends first, gradually iron it down, and when you come across here, the uh, two bits of covering will adhere to each other, giving a real strong bond, and that's the actual hinge point then where they are glued together. So you want to take your two pieces, in this case the uh, horizontal stabilizer or elevator, and I put the bevel side down on the main part and uh, also on the part that's going to be hinged. Then you take your first piece of hinge material, obviously glue side down. Line up your elevator. And take your iron, which you should know your iron well enough to know how much heat it takes to glue this down to itself and if you don't know start out with the iron fairly cool and sneak up on it gradually increasing the temperature until you get a good bond when you start doing this So I don't have that fully ironed down yet, and I don't want it fully ironed down yet. I've got that one completely tacked. So now I go to my second piece of covering material for the other side of the elevator. Tack down a corner, tack down a corner. down the corner, make sure the material is pulled out tight, tack down the last corner, 
iron across, sealing the outside edge. Do the same thing on the other edge here. All right, that is now partly done. And what we're going to do now is bend it and apply heat sealing down the rest of it and stretching that material out So we have enough material there for it to bend around. You can see how much that's bent down. Now repeat the operation. On the other side of the hinge here. And if you need more flex in it, that's enough. It flexes a little more each time you do this. And if I repeat it on this side, now that I've done both the left and the right, I get a little more flex yet. And that's basically what you're looking for, is a lot of movement in that surface. Now we're going to fold it over like this and we're going to apply the other part of the hinge. We take the material, splitting it roughly in half, wrap it around, and sometimes it likes to actually cling, so if you use your fingers to roll it in place like this. You've got it ready. And now we're going to tack down corner, 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 and the final corner. And just like the top, keeping it folded we're going to run down and seal that outside edge. Seal this outside edge. Now that we've done that, we can go to the bevels and iron them down, roll over, and at this point we have glued the two parts of the hinge to each other. Turn it over to the other side bevel. Iron down the rest of it. And we have to do the other half of it yet, but we now have a complete, strong, very flexible hinge. And if need be, when you finish it all, you can go back, heat along this seam again on both sides if you need it a little bit, a little more uh, play in it. Okay, last of the four pieces, tack the corners, iron 
iron down the back edge on both sides now we can iron down the rest of that surface and then go to the beveled portions iron them down roll across gluing together the two pieces Check for any bubbles or loose areas that you need to touch up. And we now have a completed hinge. And you can see it wants to go that way a little more. So I am once again going to put pressure on with my thumb and heat just the area where the two parts join. Stretch it out a little bit on top again. And now here is our final product. I have uh, got hours and hours of flight time on hinges like this. Haven't had one fail. They're quick. They're strong, they're durable, they're flexible, and if you do them full length like this, you also have a, a sealed hinge. So, that's how you make an X-hinge. Here's the rudder after getting its X-hinge 